Do you believe that um, them continuing to build ICBMs would violate the joint declaration from Singapore? Yeah, what, what we're going on is the commitment that Chairman Kim made to our president, and uh, that is the commitment uh, to denuclearize. And that is something that we um, certainly anticipate that he will hold up his end of the bargain and his commitment on that. In terms of that specific report, I've seen it. We're all very well aware of that report. That would fall under an intelligence matter, which is just something I'm not going to be able to get into. Really? You think he's going to hold up his end of the Bargain. Hmm. That was State Department spokeswoman Heather Nauert punting on a question about a Washington Post report, which NBC News has now confirmed, that satellite photos and U.S. intelligence show that North Korea is continuing to produce ballistic missiles and work on their missile program even after the June summit in Singapore between Donald Trump and North Korea's Kim Jong-un. The Washington Post says work is underway on at least one intercontinental ballistic missile capable of reaching the United States. That news broke just hours after Donald Trump publicly called the leader of another authoritarian regime, Iranian President Hassan Rouhani, who Donald Trump announced he would meet, quote, with no preconditions, a baffling offer from an American president who last week was hurling Twitter grenades at his Iranian counterpart, and an offer that Iran wasted no time turning down. Thanks, but no thanks. Joining us now is Steve Schmidt, Republican strategist and an old friend of mine from our days at the White House and on the campaign trail. Steve, um, let's just put this out there. You and I worked for someone who could see Russia from her house. So we're in a good position to try to ascertain whether or not Donald Trump is operating from sort of ignorance is bliss or whether he seriously has a thing for these dictators. What's your take? Well, Nicole, let me just say, former Republican to begin, but um, <laughs> look, I, I think at the, at the end what of I the like day, right? <laughs> at the end of the day, Donald Trump made the world profoundly more dangerous with his reality show diplomacy in, in, in Singapore. Of course, Kim Jong un is not honoring the spirit of the declaration or the agreement, and they're working on an intercontinental ballistic missile, which one day, a nuclear, a miniaturized nuclear warhead will sit on top of that could reach the continental United States. And so she's up there spinning the American people. Um, the intelligence agencies which are forwarding the information are under constant attack by this administration. So roughly for 40 percent of the country, doesn't matter what the intelligence agency says. What matters is what Trump says. Now, thankfully, it's a minority of the country, but it doesn't change that in actual reality, uh, the country is more endangered because we had an unprepared, ignorant president go over there with the same level of rigor that he would plan an apprentice episode with Meatloaf and Little John. <laughs> but Steve, take, take, how does the intelligence, I mean, you, 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 you pull the right thread through all three. The intelligence on North Korea didn't didn't ever point to what Donald Trump declared at the end of that summit, that, w that they're now no longer a threat. The intelligence community didn't point to or support anything that Donald Trump said. And this is just what we know of what was public at the press conference in Helsinki. And the intelligence on Iran actually suggests that the deal that the president pulled us out of was better than anything he's likely to get on his own. So how does the intelligence community serve a client who is so either disdainful or dismissive or just willfully ignores the evidence base and the fact based intelligence on all three of these dangerous regimes? Well, they can try to serve him and serve him they do, but at the end of the day, he's the president of the United States and he believes what he believes and there's more than enough news reports to suggest that he doesn't want to hear anything that he doesn't want to hear. Of course, the Iranian deal had verifiable components to it. He pulled us out of that. He achieved the remarkable feat of putting the United States opposite the European Union, Russia and Iran with Iran having the high moral ground with regard to fidelity to the agreement. The agreement reached in Singapore with North Korea, which he's violating the spirit of, was no verification protocols whatsoever. So this is all nonsense. Again, it's reality theater, but with deadly, deadly consequences. It was the strategic aim of the North Korean regime, one of the most evil and vile in the world, a slave regime, to elevate its leader to maximum standing on the world stage. And they achieved that by standing next to the president of the United States. This has been the work of decades. And Kim Jong-un knows that his nuclear weapons guarantee him insurance from invasion 
by the United States. And so Donald Trump played all of his cards, pushed all the chips in in the middle of the table, and he's left with the pair of twos. What he proved himself to be was inexperienced, naive, and ignorant, and a fool on the world stage. And, of course, that was noticed by every other adversary of this country. Steve, really quick, I want to ask you if you're surprised that not a single national, politically appointed national security official has resigned over what you just described is, is obvious to everyone in this country and around the world in the American president. I, I'm shocked by it that there are so few men and women of principle uh, that there aren't more Sally Yateses out there, that there aren't more people who say enough, particularly when we see a president of the United States going behind closed doors with Vladimir Putin, agreeing to who knows what, saying who knows what, making who knows what guarantees to Putin, what promises to Putin, what promises to turn another eye if Putin acts in the Baltics or anywhere else on the globe. He insults the Canadian prime minister. He attacks the British prime minister. He insults and attacks the chancellor of Germany. He questions and insults and degrades NATO. He questions the need for the European Union. He is an agent de facto of Russia's foreign policy. The foreign policies he's advocating, the bipartisan consensus that existed pre-Trump between Republicans and Democrats would have recognized this foreign policy as clearly in the middle lane of the Kremlin's strategic interests. And to see it being advanced by an American president is as disturbing as it is shocking. Steve, your reward for ticking off Vladimir Putin's entire honey-do list for Donald Trump is that we're going to ask you to stick around for one more minute. There's a real head-scratcher of a theory being floated about the midterms. 98 days from now, is it possible that Donald Trump actually wants the Republicans to lose, that he wants Democrats to take over the House? Steve, I'm looking at you for the answer. That's next. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.